So yeah, the new mood case from Fractal does look really good, and you can pack some pretty powerful specs in here to basically run any AAA game. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together an all AMD mini ITX powerhouse that'll basically run anything. And for this, we're actually going to be utilizing Fractal's brand new mood case. Fractal has definitely been coming to the market with these really awesome mini ITX cases like their Fractal Terra, which is actually one of my favorite cases right now. I did a build a couple weeks ago. That's my personal PC that I've been using. But when it comes to the new Fractal mode, this is definitely a modern take on the mini ITX case. This will fit in any modern living room. And if you've got a significant other that hasn't really let you put a big tower PC next to the TV, this might work out pretty well. Up top, we've got this included 180 millimeter fan. Right up front, we've actually got room for a 3.5 inch drive or two 2.5 inch drives, and this supports a 2.75 slot 325 millimeter GPU, so we can pack some power into this unit. And obviously, the form factor we're working with here is Mini ITX, but we can slam a 280 millimeter AIO up front, or you can go air cooled if you want to. I'm going to be using a 240 millimeter AIO with this build here. When it comes to the overall specs of everything I'm going to be putting in here, it's going to be a bit overkill, but I wanted to see exactly what we could do with this. So for the motherboard, I'm going to be using the MSI B650 Edge Wi-Fi. Uh, this is actually my second unit that I have. This thing works out really well. I've been using one with the 8700G in a small form factor build without an issue. Storage is going to be handled by a one terabyte Kingston Fury Renegade M.2 SSD. It is PCIe 4.0, really fast storage here. And I might need to add more down the road, but I've already got one installed here. I probably should have just went out of the box with the two terabyte just to be safe, but I think we're going to be able to get by with what we have right now. RAM is going to be handled by a Viper Elite 5 kit. This is their RGB DDR5, and this is actually their high density kit. So we've got 96 gigs with two DIMMs up to 6,000 mega transfers per second. With 96 gigs of RAM in this unit, I should be able to open at least four Chrome tabs without this thing crashing. I think uh, we've got plenty here. I usually don't do over 32 gigs. It is overkill, but since I've got it, we're going to be using it in this build. When it comes to the CPU, I opted to use the Ryzen 9 7950X, 16 cores, 32 threads. Again, overkill, just like that RAM, but we're going to kind of max this thing out. It's not an X3D chip, but it does handle gaming and productivity without an issue. Personally, love the way the Fractals designed this case. It does come with that PCIe riser, and our motherboard is just going to sit right in here. I've got my RAM, storage, and CPU already installed. I will need to install my AIO once we get to that part, but we also need power to this whole unit. And for that, I'm going to be going with this fully modular SFX at 700 watts. This is one that I actually pulled out of a case a while ago, and uh, it's kind of served me well. I think with the GPU-CPU combo that I opted to use here, we've got more than enough power, and it should fit in here quite nicely. Another reason I wanted to go with this one is because it does have shorter cables, and of course you could do a custom cable job if you want to, but having that modular power supply is definitely the way to go with a rig like this. Cool in this 16 core CPU is going to be handled by the Thermaltake Frozen Prism 240. This is the black version. They also make a white version. And it was kind of a toss up between air and an AIO. We don't have a lot of room to work with in here, but it will support up to a 112 millimeter CPU cooler. But since we've got those 16 cores and 32 threads, I figured liquid would be more suited for a build like this. I just hope once I get everything assembled, we can make everything fit. Uh, it's definitely going to be tight with this because the block on it is so tall. Thermalright does make a slew of different AIOs. I've used a lot of their air coolers in the past for small form factor builds. I've never run into an issue with those, and I've only used one of their other AIOs. It was a 380 millimeter. It went in a rig that I built for one of my buddies, and it's still going strong. I mean, he hasn't run into any issues with it, so I figured we'd use it. Plus, these are really cheap. I think this was only like $48 over on Amazon. After messing around with this thing for a little bit, I was able to make that 240 millimeter AIO fit. I did have to swap those fans to the front so they're not rubbing on any cables or anything. So it's going to push air right over that cooler into the case. And with that 180 millimeter up top that comes included with the mood, it's just going to pull all that air out. With the Ryzen 7950X, it does have an iGPU built in, but we're not going to get any real good 1440p gaming going on that thing. So I'm going to be adding an AMD Radeon RX 7900 GRE. This is ASRock Steel Legend version. We've got 16 gigs of VRAM, and basically this is a cut down 7900 XTX. 
And originally, I was going to go with a 7900 XTX, but uh, the one I have from ASRock is just a bit too big for this case. But I think the GRE is going to be perfect for 1440p on newer stuff. We can definitely go to 4K with a lot of the older stuff, no problem at all. So now I've got everything installed, everything cleaned up. We'll go ahead and boot it up for the first time. And there's another big reason I wanted to go with all AMD. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Windows 11 Pro running on this thing, but we will be installing Linux in a future video. So definitely keep an eye out. A little bit of RGB on those fans for that 7900 GRE. Slides right down on there, nice and neat. We've got one more panel to go over the GPU. And I was kind of hoping that we would be able to shine through a little bit here. So once this is, let's say, in the living room, we'd see a little bit of RGB on the wall. Not sure if those fans are bright enough, but I gotta say, this is a really good looking mini ITX case. Personally, I think it's absolutely beautiful, but we definitely need to see how it performs. Okay, so I've been up and running for a little while now. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen 9 7950X, 16 cores, 32 threads, 96 gigs of RAM, and I did enable that XMP profile, so we're up to 6,000 megahertz. And of course, we've got that AMD Radeon RX 7900 GRE with 16 gigs of VRAM. First thing I did here was run some benchmarks, and I'm pretty impressed by what this thing's doing. Checking out Geekbench 6, coming in with a single core of 2,992, multi 20,398. And I knew that our multi-core score was going to be on up there with those 16 cores and 32 threads, but seeing this close to 3,000 is pretty amazing. Moving over to some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark, Steel Nomad, 4,598, Firestrike, 45,666, and finally, we've got Time Spy here with a really impressive 20,149. I'm very impressed with all the synthetics that I ran on this system, but now it's time to jump into some real world gaming. And the first one we have here has been one that I've been testing on a lot of different systems from iGPUs up to high end GPUs Horizon Forbidden West. We're at 1440p, very high settings, with no FSR, and we're not using frame gen yet, but that's something I definitely want to show off. Now with the 7900 GRE, I was really hoping we'd see a decent frame rate without any kind of scaling. And of course we are at 1440p, seeing an average of around 86 FPS with this game maxed out. Again, I've been testing this game out quite a bit. It's definitely one of the harder ones to run at full speed on lower end systems, but we're not working with the lower end system here. And I think we're seeing some really great performance with no FSR. And by the way, this was recently updated with FSR 3.1 and built-in AMD frame generation. So what I'm gonna do now is just turn on frame generation. We're gonna leave FSR off. And with frame gen on, we've gained an average of 47 FPS. So we're up in the 140s right now, which is more than enough for this game. And I'd say if you wanted to play this at 4K on this system, you probably need a little bit of frame gen turned on. Next up, we've got Cyberpunk 2077 1440p Ultra Settings. FSR is set to auto. And if I had to guess, in some cases, it's probably taken FSR close to the balance preset in some cases, but we're seeing an average of around 81 FPS. To tell you the truth, I thought we'd see a little more out of this. And of course, taking FSR to pure balanced or performance will net us much higher frame rate. But either way, I mean, we're over that 60 threshold and it looks great at 1440p Ultra. Forza Horizon 5, I know for a fact that we can run this at 4K extreme settings around 80 FPS, but I'm at 1440p extreme, no scaling, so FSR is completely off. We're not using any kind of hacks or anything like that to get a different kind of resolution. Native 1440p, I'm seeing an average of 178 FPS. I was I always I always like to throw at least one fighting game into the mix. So we've got Mortal Kombat 1, 1440p, ultra high settings, no FSR, and I knew we'd have a great time with this. Uh, for some reason, I couldn't go up to 120, and this is one of those games that usually I've got the option to run this at 120. I think we could definitely handle it with this system, but for some reason in the settings, we only had that 60 FPS mark. 
This is one that I've been playing a lot recently. I never played this on PlayStation 4, and I'm actually glad that I didn't, because coming over to PC with this at 1440, very high, with no scaling whatsoever, this is a beautiful game. I mean, one of the best looking games in my opinion. And since this is a newer Nixus game, we do have FSR 3.1 if you want to use it, but we've also got AMD's frame gen built into the setting, so we don't need to use fluid motion frames. And to tell you the truth, I don't need frame gen right now because we're seeing an average of around 103 FPS with this game at 1440p maxed out. But turning frame gen on from the settings does net us a lot more. We're now seeing an average of 151 FPS. Here's Red Dead 2, just using that built-in benchmark, and I've really never liked the settings that they used with this game, but we've got the slider all the way up to Ultra, and I did enable FSR. We're at balanced right now. I actually, ran, I actually ran this a couple times just to make sure that, you know, I was at 1440p with it, because uh, taking a look at the end of this benchmark, we had a minimum of 92, maximum of 300, and an average of 200 FPS. So yeah, I mean, I could disable some of that FSR, but it still looked great. And finally, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, 1440p Ultra, frame gen on, average of 112, and our 1% lows were 84. So we've got more than enough to play this game, and if you take a look, we are at a native 1440p. The last thing I wanted to take a look at were CPU temps, and remember, I mean, depending on the parts you use, this is going to be much different across the board, but with that 240mm AIO paired up with that Ryzen 9 7950X, Idle, 57 degrees Celsius, average gaming, 77, and I was able to hit thermal throttle with this using Cinebench, and I knew it was going to happen because this CPU can actually pull up to around 218 watts in this system. Having a bigger cooler would be nice, but you know, we're kind of limited with the space. But under everyday normal usage and gaming, I'm not worried about the temps here whatsoever. Noise is very minimal. Uh, you can really kind of dial it in. And again, it's really going to depend on what kind of CPU cooler combo you choose to use in a case like this. But overall, really impressed with the performance, and I love the look of this thing. It'll fit right in any kind of living room. Uh, they do make a black version. This is the light gray version. If you're interested in putting something like this together, maybe with some lower end specs, I will leave links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If you want to see Linux running on this system, just let me know in the comments below. I think it would be really cool to see what we could get out of this thing. Like always, thanks for watching.